Hey guys, Sherry here from the Flexgiving Crew. How's it going? So this is going to be a Twin Flame reading for October the 30th until November the 7th. So I'm, oops, I'm going to be using my deck. So the Queen of Swords just flipped over. So that's someone who needs to speak her truth. Wow. Um, somebody who's emotionally detached. Um... What I'm feeling is communication is important. Okay, so let's begin here. So, uh, beginning with the feminine's past position, Six of Swords. So, this is moving to a calmer state of mind. It's from chaos to peace, serenity. So, the feminine has really been, um, you know, having these thoughts tugging at our mind and this was predominant in last week's reading so here we have her moving on from that um, finding some peace and stillness okay the masculine's recent past or past position sacral chakra so this is where your emotions are stored it's a lower chakra um, so Usually I see it as a deficit, right? So I'm going to pull one more card. Actually, I'm going to use my new deck here. Um, I just made a tiny deck with just words written on it. So um, they have reverse meanings, like um, two sides of the same coin, like a dichotomy kind of card. So some of them are upside down, some of them are upright. So I'll just flip a couple upside down here. So just one card for the sacral chakra, please. What do you mean by that? Someone new. Okay, so um, right away, you know, what I see here is a karmic relationship or the masculine may be involved with another person to kind of, you know, feel some sort of emotional satisfaction there's what I'm feeling here strongly is a separation um, in the past so you know we see a masculine walking away the feminine's kind of turned in a different direction and over here we have um, you know a lower vibration of emotions with somebody new so it's not a true twin flame connection um, so let's continue on. Oop. It's in the feminine's present position. The Knight of Swords. So more swords. This is communication, thoughts. Um, the Knight is forward movement. It's very quick, very scattered. Um, so the feminine wants to move forward and communicate or speak her truth or fight for something you know this is a, a champion he fights for truth and justice but um there's no emotional attachment here it's just you know go in fight a battle um and then gone again so very winded very um scattered thoughts so the mask in his present position is seven of swords so this is feeling betrayed or stabbed in the back or feeling like you can't trust somebody. Um, so, you know, this is in terms of the connection, right? So it's almost like he's hiding behind his emotions or making up things in his mind, um, you know, to make his actions okay. All right, so the near future for the feminine is very nice. Okay, so more walking away. This is emotional withdrawal. Um, so it's moving on. It's leaving eight cups behind and um, starting brand new somewhere else. So two cards of moving away. Now, this is also a pilgrimage in search of self, but it's the beginning of that journey. Okay, near future for the masculine, the moon. Very heavy, heavy energy here for sure. Okay, so the moon is 
um, your darkest fears, the shadow side, those whispering voices. Um, I was just noticing here, there's a six and a nine. I never noticed that before. So that's cancer, um, which is my sign. But anyway, uh, so this is an emotional card, water, right? So there's, there's a sense that he is drowning in emotion and fear. And, you know, maybe even trying to get some, you know, feel love or a connection with somebody else to, you know, kind of drown out that, that um, deficit. So this is facing your fear. So he needs to release some energy or move through a veil. What is the final outcome for the feminine? Four of Wands. Wow, what a happy ending. I'm so happy to see this. So this is um, a confirmation of a twin flame connection, but I usually like to use my 1111 calling card. Um, but this retains the original meaning of the twins coming together in union in 3D as well as spiritually. So it could just be, you know, the feminine taking on that vibration for herself, not necessarily meaning union or coming together, but we see her walking away from something that is emotionally and mentally um, playing with her, you know, and, and so she's moving to a more um, loving space. All right, so what is the final outcome for the masculine is the King of Pentacles. So this is earth energy, this is air energy. Um, the King of Pentacles is somebody who is very grounded, very successful, um, but this is also the masculine in the 3D reality. Um, so I'm going to pull one confirmation card for that using my little deck here. What do you mean by the King of Pentacles spirit? Wow, the 1111 card. Um, okay, so for me this says that either he faces his fears and he comes towards the feminine in the 3D reality, right? We've got a synchronicity here, 1111, 1111, um, 3D, 3D and spiritual, right? Um, you know, the King of Pentacles is somebody who doesn't place a lot of importance on material possessions. He, he's all about family, love, safety and security, right? So, um, that it's it's like a decision made and here this is what I know I understand this connection and um, it's almost like he he makes a realization right it's like he's in doubt he's in fear um, and then suddenly he arises out of this darkened state with you know this understanding right the the moon card is illumination so something not known, and so is this card. Something's not known, right? There's a lot of fear and doubt. Um, you know, and the someone new could just mean um, the feminine as well, right? If if the masculine is in a karmic relationship at the moment. Um, you know, it's like, but there's a sense that he can't express his emotions. Okay, so what is the feminine bringing into the connection, into the union? The Knight of Wands. So this is, again, another knight on the feminine side. So this is movement forward. Now, the horse is facing away from the union, so there's a sense that she is um, conquering her own goals or going after some dreams or passions or creative energy. Um, but there's this sense of fire excitement um, but I see it as her moving forward almost without the masculine in a sense so let me pull another card uh, from the same deck eight of swords so she feels locked out of this connection here we have a six a seven and then an eight so 
because she feels locked out, um, she is releasing herself from those mental thoughts and trying to concentrate on a, you know, spirituality and her own soul growth. Okay, so what is the masculine bringing in? The Page of Cups. So, water, energy here. So, this is communicating love. Wanting to, uh, to express himself, his emotions. Um, and it's desiring a new loving connection as well. This is also someone who is a muse, inspires artists to create. So, there is a desire here, whereas on the feminine side, she feels locked out. Okay, so the foundation is destiny. So it's a shared energy between the two. Um, so this is, you know, a sense that we have that shared destiny that both um, aspects are moving towards. And so there's a deep knowing um, of this connection. Um, even though it's not <clears throat> fully being expressed here. Um, so destiny is good luck, good fortune coming back to you as well. Um, and it represents significant change. So there's a significant um, change or air of change that, you know, that's grounding, that's at the foundation of this connection. So the crowning is Ace of Swords. So... This is a communication card, but also it is a card of speaking your truth, knowing your truth, it's justice, cutting away barriers, darkness, right? So both aspects are holding this Ace of Swords in their hands, and it's almost like, you know, it's a tool that they're using to cut away negative thoughts, right, and release themselves from these burdens. Um, but this, is, this card is also about victory success and new beginnings uh, but it's also making a decision and grounding that decision into reality and and so I'm really feeling like a decision being made up here um, and all throughout the reading with, with the feminine you know it's deciding to move to a calmer state of mind deciding to uh, walk away from the emotional turmoil right there's nothing but chaos um, in the first four well three cards plus the union energy there's a lot of um, doubting, um, fearful, um, pushing, pulling energy where the masculine is just stuck in a dark state, right? Can't trust, fear, um, but ultimately there's love in his heart. Uh, so that's crowning, okay? So heart-centered energy is nice. The Ten of Pentacles, wow. So I like to see this masculine here as, you know, the King of Pentacles retired, right? So this is um, retirement, a long time goal fulfilled, and definitely the King of Pentacles would be somebody who would fulfill that. Um, so there's definitely this feeling of a union that may happen for some twins, for sure, in the 3D. You know, all three of these cards are, are pointing to that. So, um, yeah. That's beautiful. Okay, so the bottom of the deck is the strength card. So the overall energy of the reading is courage, strength, um, taming the beast within, not lashing out, not letting the ego take hold, creating a loving environment and right now you know we don't see that open environment you know there's a sense of being locked out a sense of fear um, questioning walking away slamming doors <laughs> do you know what I mean so um, overall spirit is is asking you to find that gentle side of yourself and you know be kind to others as well as yourself so um, yeah Okay, so I'm going to pull two cards from Miss and Remains, and I'll read that to you. So I'm going to be trying to keep the readings as short as possible, um, and that goes for the private readings as well. I'm not going to be doing extended readings. I find that they take too much energy out of me. 
Okay, so for the feminine first is my tentacle friend, and for the masculine is, okay, so absinthe mermaid. So I think it's upright. So the absinthe mermaid is all about addictions. It's numbing the pain, and um, I think the tentacle friend is about like, overextending yourself. So let me just read those to you. Okay, so I am extended in eight directions, torn and pulled beyond the max. I have thumbs in too many puddings. I must withdraw, renew, and relax. An exhausted sea maiden holds on limply to her octopus companion. She is overextended, tired, and in need of rest, revitalization, or rebirth. Her paler suggests depleted energy and waning vigor. So the message is reclaim your overextended self. You have become overextended like an octopus who has stretched each arm in different directions. The overextension has left you weak, vulnerable, and haggard. It's time to reduce your obligations and draw inward for a time. Decide upon your highest priorities and release those duties that no longer aid you. Um, are you, or sorry, or are not as important as they once were. Reclaim the parts of yourself, both mentally and physically that are being improperly used and let them rest for a time. When you're feeling stronger, put them back to use constructively. If you see the need, uh, but do not let yourself get so overburdened again. Always keep an arm in reserve for surprise tasks that is near and dear to your heart or fuels your personal ambitions. Yeah, and that's exactly what I was seeing here. It's like you, the feminine is overextending yourself, right? Being pulled, pushed and pulled in different directions. That's exactly what I was saying. So, number 26. So, Absinthe Mermaid. Languid with barely the strength to lift my head, I indulge in more. My decadent drink. My Viridian vice. I crave more. I succumb to more. I am myself no more. A comatose green mermaid is draped in a, a toxic stream of bottles, skulls, and poisons. She is drugged and lethargic, a slave to her torpid addictions. She seems at risk of being washed away at a moment's notice. Beware of dependency. Absinthe Mermaid has wallowed in her addiction for too long. She has become languid. You have spent too long immersed in the addictions or dependence. Addictions and dependence sap one's energy and rob one of vitality and strength. Something in your life, a substance, an obsession, or an unhealthy relationship is draining your life essence and you need to let go. Seek assistance from a trusted friend and wise person in your community or a professional to help you rid, your, rid you of your unhealthy attachment before it's too late. Once you have escaped, reevaluate your life and take stock of the frailties. What led you down the path of addiction and dependence in the first place? What steps can you take to avoid stumbling down the rabbit hole again? Okay, so, um, you know, I'm feeling definite heaviness between the two aspects for sure. There's, there's this uh, pain of separation um, that I'm feeling. And um, ultimately, it works out great. But, um, yeah, um, there you go. So I hope this helps you guys. Let me know. Um, leave a comment. And thank you for your likes, shares, and please show your love by subscribing. All right, peace.